Let us begin our discussion of the first segment of this lecture by a review of the notions of centrality that we have seen in the laws of large numbers and in the central limit theorem. The idea here is that these capture typicality. What is the setting? We start by considering a random sample. Independent selection bias free from some underlying distribution. Repeated independent trials. So let x1, x2, x3 be a sequence of independent trials. x represents an exemplar of this sequence. They all have a common probability law, a common distribution. And let us say, for definiteness, that the underlying probability law has got an expectation mu and a variance sigma squared. We immediately form partial sums of the sequence. So let S sub n, as usual, represent the sum of the first n x's. A standardized version of the sum is obtained by centering it at zero and making the spread unit. And this leads to a standardized or normalized variable, S n star, which centers S n by subtracting its expectation n times mu from it and scales it to unit, makes it dimensionless, if you will, by dividing by the standard deviation of Sn, which is the square root of n times sigma. So now let's begin. What can we say about these sums and these standardized sums? The law of large numbers, which is at the heart of the theory of probability, says that the relative frequency, Sn over n, the sample mean is asymptotically concentrated at its expected value, mu. What does this mean? Well, we can dress it up by talking about deviations from the center. And in fact, the strong law of large numbers of Kolmogorov says that the probability that Sn over n, the sample mean, deviates from its expected value by epsilon or more goes to zero. Another way of saying this is that viewed as a sequence of sample means, S1 over 1, S2 over 2, S3 over 3, Sn over n, these sequences converge with probability 1 to the expected value. So here's a powerful notion of concentration. The central limit theorem adds flesh to these bare bones and says, in the region around the center, you have a normal distribution, a bell curve emerging. And so a formal statement is that a suitably standardized, normalized version of Sn, Sn star, is asymptotically, for large enough values of n, normally distributed. And of course, what this means is that the probability that Sn star takes values in any interval, is asymptotically governed by the area under the bell curve over that interval. So these are the two fundamental limit laws. We shall now turn to two subtle applications of these laws. 